Hello, good morning, and thank you for joining uh, me on this course titled How to Make Bahur. Bahur is Arabian incense. My name is Dr. Rabi Ekore. I'm the owner of Etusi Online Courses, where we teach people how to make colored cosmetics, perfumes, skin, and hair care products. I would like to share my screen with you now. Thank you once again for joining me on this course. As mentioned earlier, the course is titled How to Make Bakur. The objective of this course is to enable DIY perfumers learn how to make the exotic Arabian incense called Bakur. The course is made up of four lessons. In lesson one, you would get a brief introduction or a brief uh, detail of the Arabian incense bakul. In lesson two, we will discuss the ingredients, tools, and equipment needed to make bakul. In lesson three, I'll be showing you how to produce bakul. While in lesson four, you will see how to package, store, and use bakul. Finally, there's a video showing you how to caramelize sugar and finish the bakul making process. The course is very simple. It's for beginners. Those at intermediate and expert levels can also take the course. Uh, the course is targeted towards DIY perfumers, cosmetics and skincare products makers. At the end of this course, you should know the basic details of Bakur, the Arabian incense, and its uses and applications, especially in the Middle East or in Arabian countries. You should know the basic structure of every Bakur you see. You should know the ingredients, tools, and equipment required to make Bakur at home. And you should know how to produce, package, and use Bakur. You should be able to make Bakur at the end of this course. These are images I took of the different batches of Bakur I made at home. I encourage you to enroll for the course now. Honestly, you'd be so glad you did. Thank you. I'll see you in the introductory lesson. Hello, welcome once again to this course titled How to Make Bahur. Bahur, again, is the Arabian incense. My name is Dr. Rabi Ekure. This is lesson one of the course. We'll be talking about Bahur in this course. I'm going to give you a brief description of the Arabian incense called Bahur, and we'll talk about the functions of Bakur, that is where and how Bakur is used. So I'd like to start by saying that fragrant aromas have always played important roles in the lives of the Arabian people since time immemorial. Bakur refers to scented wood chips, shavings of powder, of specific woods, woods of specific trees, uh, namely agar wood, sandal wood, or shedder wood. There are different uh, uses or situations in which um, bakur is used. First and foremost, it's used for personal care, for scenting the body. Uh, in this case, the bakur, uh, the fumes, the smoke uh, fumes from the Burning incense is sort of placed under the clothing or 
uh, trapped under the clothing briefly to capture some of the smoke under the clothes of the wearer. In this way, it scents the body. Bahur is used popularly for freshening the air or deodorizing the air in homes or during gatherings. It is used during social gatherings like weddings and parties to fragrance the avenues or the, uh, the room or the arena where people are gathered. And um, very importantly, it is used during spiritual and religious activities. It can be during regular prayer and worship sessions or during pilgrimage. Here are pictures of uh, finished forms of Bahu. This you can see make out wooden chips. This, uh, these are loose forms. These two, the chips are loosely bound. While in this case, you can see they are both molded. So this appears rough, but these are roughly molded balls. So these are different forms in which you are likely going to see Baku out there or forms in which you are going to make yours, as you will see in the coming lessons. Thank you so much. I'll see you in lesson two, where we'll discuss ingredients, tools, and equipment needed to make Baku. Thank you. Welcome back. This is lesson two of the course, How to Make Baku. In lesson two, we shall be discussing ingredients, tools, and equipment needed to make Baku. My name is Dr. Rabi Ekore, and uh, as mentioned, we'll be discussing the required ingredients, tools, and equipment, their functions, and their sources. So let's start with the ingredients. Uh, first and foremost, uh, bakur is made up of three basic components, namely fragrance notes, the dilutant or carrier, and the fixative, just like in making regular perfumes or perfumed products. In the case of bakur, fragrance note is basically base notes that is woody or balsamic notes. Popularly used fragrance notes include sandalwood, wood, amber, and musk. However, modern day baku makers use even commercial uh, perfumes, commercial, commercially sold perfumes, which include top notes, middle notes, and base notes. Next, you have the dilutant or carrier in the case of Baku, is the wooden chips or shavings or powdered wood. Then there's a fixative, which usually is a caramel or very thick sugar syrup. So these are some of the ingredients. We mentioned earlier wood from special trees, specific trees, agar wood, Cheddar wood, sandal wood, that the popularly used uh, wood made used to make baku. Then we have resins. Popularly used resins are frankincense, myrrh, and amber resins or gums. These are the resins. Dried flowers are usually used to make traditional baku, uh, specifically petals of dried flowers. Some um, baku makers also add dried herbs and spices. Hydrosols or floral waters are used. Then sugar, lemon juice, and lastly, fragrance blends. This is optional. I'll discuss that later. So let's talk about the individual ingredients briefly. Uh, I mentioned wood from and the trees of sandalwood, agarwood, and shadowwood 
are used. You can use chips, shavings, or powder forms of this um, of wood obtained from these trees. And these woods, they are special in the sense that their woods uh, are fragrant. They are inherently fragrant, and very importantly, they form the bulk of alcohol ingredients. So in this uh, image here, you can see these are wood uh, ingredients. You can see there are chips of different sizes. And when I start the video, you will see there are other forms. Sorry. Okay, so you can see these are powdered woods, different sizes of chips. These are pellets of the wood. These dark ones are already um, soaked with fragrant uh, oil blends. Next, we'll talk about the resins. Um, popularly used resins or gums are frankincense, maya, and amber. Um, the, the resins function as binders and fixatives. And of course, they also add some fragrance to the bakul. Then next, we have dried flowers, herbs, and spices. The use of these is optional, especially if you are using an already prepared fragrance oil or blend of oils. Fragrant flowers like rose, jasmine, and lavender are used. They serve both as fragrance and they add to the bulk of uh, the final product. Popularly used herbs or spices are cloves, saffron, vanilla, and cinnamon. They add spicy, balsamic, or oriental fragrant notes to the baku. The next ingredient we'll be discussing is hydrosol or floral waters. Rose water is the most or the commonly used floral water in the making of bakur. Others that can be used include lavender water or uh, orange blossom water, that's neroli water. The floral waters add fragrance to the bakur and they are also used in the preparation of the caramel or thick syrup which serve as binders or fixatives. Then sugar, this is optional if you are making caramel or fixative. Uh, it's, the sugar may be caramelized together with the hydrosol and the lemon. It serves as a binder or fixative if used in making bakul. Next is fragrance. Again, this is optional because the real traditional bakul is made from fragrant wood and fragrant flower petals, as I've mentioned earlier. So the process of burning the bakul releases the fragrance from these um, woods and, and flowers. However, modern day bakul makers add traditional wood oil blends to their bakul to give extra exotic and um, fragrant notes to their bakul. So you may want to get some of these traditional oil blends and use if you want. The oil blends can be single, can be made of single notes or a blend of desired notes. And these notes are mostly woody or balsamic or oriental. Obviously, they impart fragrant properties on the bakul. That's that for ingredients. Next, we'll talk about tools and equipment. You need, first of all, safety tools, face masks especially, because uh, the process of grinding or blending the wooden chips and the resins and then mixing the baku may lead to the re release of strong fumes, which you may find uncomfortable. So it's good to have minimum face masks to use. The use of gloves, goggles, or face shield are optional. You need a blender or coffee grinder to grind some of your solid ingredients especially the wooden chips and the resins and dry them petal flowers if you want. If you prefer, you can use a mortar and pestle if you have those. But whatever you are using, whether blender or coffee grinder, 
for whatever tool or equipment you are using, try to reserve them specifically for making uh, skincare products or cosmetics. Do not use them to process food that you are going to eat. You will need a heat source, preferably an electric cooker. Try to avoid producing and some of these products, especially the flammable ones, over open flames. You need measuring cups and spoons. You need a weighing scale, a small or large one, depending on the quantity of vacuum you are making. You need stirring spoons and rod, preferably wooden or made of um, ceramic or um, stainless steel. Avoid using plastic stirring rods and spoons because the heat may destroy them. You need deep bowls. This can be plastic, but make sure it's sturdy plastic. It can also be made of stainless steel or ceramic. You need glass jars with tight lids to store your finished products. So next, we'll talk about where to get the ingredients. Most times you'll find them in stores owned by Arabians or Asians, especially stores where spices, fruits, and nuts are sold. In some of these stores, you also get um, the perfume oil blends, and uh, you can go to these stores physically to purchase your ingredients. This is preferable, this is advisable, or you can shop online. Uh, it's better to go physically where you can ask questions and see a wide array of ingredients. If you live in the Middle East ten countries or any of the Arabian countries, you can easily get these ingredients in souks, in their traditional markets called souks. So that's that for tools and ingredients and equipment. Next, we'll be discussing the production process. Thank you for joining. I'll see you there. Hello, welcome back. I hope you have enjoyed the course so far. This is lesson three of the course, and in this lesson, I'll be showing you, I'll be walking you through the process of producing bakur at home. I'd like to share my screen with you now. Okay, so this is lesson three of the course titled How to Make Baku. So in lesson three, we'll be going through the production process. You would also see a video showing you uh, the time where sugar gets caramelized. So this is the formula we'll be using. I urge you to get this. Uh, this is just the basic formula. You can tweak this to suit your taste or desire or to suit the ingredients you have available. Optional ingredients here are the dried flower petals. They are optional, especially if you have a fragrance oil blend available. Clove is also optional. So you can remove both if you want and then make up for it with and wooden chips. So here is the formula and the wooden chips of powder. Uh, you can get either wood, that's agar wood, sandal wood, or shedder wood. You can use one or a combination of the three of them. Frankincense, resins, amber. Uh, you can use my in place of amber or all three. Uh, there's fragrance oil blend blend of your choice. You can prepare your own blend. For Baku, as mentioned in previous lessons, the fragrant notes typically are of wood, sandalwood, amber, or oak moss. Uh, you need floral water or rose water, rose water specifically, if you are making a syrup or caramel. You need sugar and lemon juice for the syrup or caramel. This formula gives about 250 grams of baku. As I've said before, 
this, you can adjust this formula as you like. But just make sure the three basic components of Baku are represented. That's the fragrance, the uh, dilutant or carrier, and the fixative. So how do we make Baku? First and foremost, you need to prepare the ingredients for mixing. If you are using the wooden chips or shavings as they are, that's fine. But if you want, you can grind them into powder form. Better still, you can buy the powder form from the market. That makes life a lot easier. You will need to grind all the resins, frankincense, mire. Depending on their size, you can either grind them in the, with a blender or coffee grinder, or you use a mortar and pestle to pulverize them. You need to grind the sugar. If you're using the locally made sugar balls, please use mortar and pestle to pulverize them. Do not blend them directly in your grinder or blender. You need to prepare the fragrance oils or at least get them ready for use. Measure them, measure the quantity you want to use and keep it aside. As mentioned earlier, uh, you have already combined blends available in the market. And typically these are of woody notes like wood, musk and amber fragrances. Uh, you can use your preferred pre fragrance alone or a combination of fragrances can be blended. So to start, you pour the wooden chips, shavings or powder into a deep bowl. The next step is to add the Baku fragrance blend to the wooden chips or powder and mix in thoroughly to en ensure even distribution. Then cover this uh, bowl, this mixture of uh, wooden chips or powder and then fragrance or cover it tightly and set aside. If possible, leave it overnight to allow the wood ingredients to absorb the fragrance oil thoroughly. Or you can leave it aside for a few, maybe one or two hours, then use. The next step is to prepare your syrup or caramel. You do this by combining the sugar, hydrosol, rose water in this case, and lemon in a saucepan and heat it gently. Allow it to boil gently on, until it becomes very thick. If you are using a syrup or until the thick syrup goes on to form a caramel. The caramel forms if you allow the sugar, water, and lemon mixture to boil for longer. Uh, make sure you heat it carefully so that it doesn't burn. You will see a video where the sugar is being converted into caramel. So when you you have your thick sugar syrup or your caramel, you add it to the mixture of wooden chips and fragrance oil and mix in thoroughly. Please note here that the viscosity of the binder as the caramel or the thick syrup determines if the wooden chips will be loosely or tightly bound together. So that's that. This is what it looks like. This particular looking for my cursor. This image here, this particular um, baku, is made up of loosely bound um, wooden chips. I bought the chips from the market and blended slightly. I didn't want it um, to be powdered. So this, these are loosely bound and it's good to use. You can take small portions at a time to use in your incense burner. So you store the baku in a glass jar. Make sure the lid is tightly covered. Leave as little space as possible in the jar, just like you do for perfumes or perfume products. Cover and store for a period of one to four weeks or longer to allow for adequate infusion of the fragrance oil into the wood and also for the fragrance blend to age. That will give you better aroma when you eventually use it. Those who make perfumes already 
know this. Parkour, apart from being made in the form of loose, uh, loosely bound chips, you can also make it in the form of smooth molded balls or compact bricks. And in this case, powdered wood is used as the wood is ground into powdered form. In this case, if you are going to um, grind, if you are going to make the bakur in, in the form of molded balls, you would need a stronger binder or fixative, and that's caramel. You make sure you, you caramelize the sugar to use because it gives a better binding and allows the finished product to be molded easily or pressed into balls or bricks. So this image, this is an image of um, uh, the caramel, the sugar has been caramelized. You will see a video shortly. And the combination of wood chips and fragrance oil has been added to the caramel here. And see, it's been molded into balls. These are roughly cut, roughly shaped. You can do it as beautifully as you want. So I've talked about this. The powdered wood and ground resins are added to the caramelized mixture, mixture and stirred in until uniformly mixed. Finally, the baku is molded into balls or cut up into small squares or round shapes or pressed into compact bricks. So this here is a video showing the point at which the line on those So that's that for the process, the production process. Uh, I hope with this, you'll be able to make some bakul on your own. In the next uh, lesson, I'll be showing you how to use the bakul. Thank you once again for joining me. Welcome back. This is lesson four of the course titled How to Make Bakul. My name is Dr. Rabi Ekuri. In this lesson, I'll be talking about how to package and use a bakul and also how to store it. So usually bakul is packaged in glass jars with tight seals or covers. The size of the jar you will use obviously would depend on the form and shape of the bako. If you are using, uh, if you made bako in the form of loosely bound chips, any size of jar will do once you fill it up to the brim, seal it tightly and store. If you made a bako in the form of balls or bricks, you might need a fairly large a glass container, glass jar, to store them and most importantly, make sure you fill it to the brim and cover, leave as little space as possible in the jar. Then label each jar. Wherever you store or package your bakul, put a label which should contain two basic, inform two minimum information at the least the label should have the name of the product, in, the, in this case, Bakul, and please put the date of production. Then store your prepared Bakul in a cool, dry, and dark place. I must say that before packaging the Bakul in glass jars, make sure they've cooled down completely so that they don't form steam and uh, sort of 
increase the, the likelihood of the vacuum spoiling soon. So make sure the vacuum is completely cooled before you package it. So how to use the vacuum? You light a charcoal and get it burning. Uh, place it on an incense or baku burner. This here is an incense burner, it's a baku burner. You find them readily available in Asian or Arabic stores or in some malls. Uh, there are different types, different designs. Some are completely open at the top. Some have uh, covered tops with perforations like you're seeing. The choice is yours. It's a matter of aesthetics. Some are made of wood, some are made of ceramics, while some are made of metal, different types of ornamental metals. So you place some baku on the hot coal, which you have placed in the incense burner, and then you cover it if there's a cover, and allow the smoke to rise and fill the space where you want to use the baku. Enjoy the blissful and exotic aroma emanating from the baku. The aroma is unbelievably exotic. I assure you, the fragrant aroma from the baku you have just made is pure bliss. Ensure the area or room where you are burning the baku is well ventilated because, as you can see, you are generating smoke and you don't want. Uh, the place to be filled with too much smoke. You would want the smoke to escape. Do not directly inhale the smoke from Baku, please. Make sure nobody, don't put it in the line of direction of your breathing. So that's that. This is a video showing Baku, the Baku, one of them that I made, I showed in this bus. This is it that I'm doing in the Baku ball. It's very fragrant and the aroma is long lasting. That's that for this course. This brings us to the end of the course titled how to make Baku. I urge you to try and make some for yourself. You would really, really enjoy making and doing it. And if you plan to sell your Baku, make sure you comply with the regulations, the local regulations governing and the sale of production and sale of uh, personal care products in the place where you reside. Thank you so much. I wish you all the best in your endeavor. Bye.